Hi there, Cancer. Welcome to an end of February 2020 general tarot update. It's Raina here. I'm having a little bit of, um, I don't know if it's just a hard time readjusting to this deck that I'm, that I have uh, brought back out. It's uh, called the Wild Unknown Tarot deck and I really enjoy it and I feel comfortable using it. It just I've been uh, starting over. I think I read one of the cards wrong and I'm going to have to do another reading over again. Whew. And so I was, I don't know, I wasn't connecting properly with the cards. So I just felt like starting over again. But I really do like the deck. One of the things I like about this deck is you see how this is like, these are pen and ink drawings, but you see the texture of it. Um, I'm sure they use watercolor. Yeah, it looks like watercolor and then pen and ink. And so there's a lot of texture along with the, you know, the images that are very nice as well. Kind of imaginative. Some of them are head scratchers to me, but um, a lot of them are evocative. And so this is the heart of the matter, the Two of Cups. So this is a card of committing to somebody or reuniting with somebody. And um, I'm recording this the day that Mercury goes retrograde, so who knows? Maybe there'll be somebody that you're thinking about. And what you have to think about is, why do we break up? Um, that's the first thing I always say to people when they, um, you know, mention, will I get back together with somebody? I always say, why did you break up? That seems like that would be the first thing to question. Why did you break up? And people want to gloss over that because the fact that that person calls them up is like, it can feel really good. So if, if you're somebody who just had, you know, because of Valentine's Day and you're th prompted to think about somebody and maybe you're even tempted to call them, just keep that in mind of what is the history of this relationship. And don't sugarcoat it, but who knows? Um, there are cards that suggest then in some cases, it might have been some other reason, because we have here, in the past position, the eight, Ace of Swords, which can mean kind of gaining clarity. So it is possible that for some um, cancer people, um, you are the ones that are having a hard time deciding whether or not to commit. And it's funny because... You know, cancer people can can be like that once in a blue moon. You know, it depends on other factors. I would imagine if that's the case, that your moon is in Sagittarius or something like that, or Gemini, or you have Gemini um, Venus and things like that, where you just are more independent than the typical cancer person who just really wants to have that family life, and they, they really feel comfortable in that environment and have absolutely no trouble committing but that's why we can't you know say things across the board this is what makes astrology so cool because um, those are archetypes but there are always going to be nuances depending on other influences within the person so um, you're gaining clarity about something and who knows, maybe that person is going to call you in the next couple of weeks as Mercury is retrograde and you're going to question. You're not going to just say, oh yeah, sure, no problem. You might, you, with the Ace of Swords, you may have been like kind of putting two and two together about this person. I think sometimes that is when they call. I was reading something where they were talking about narcissists, which is, you know, that's more of the extreme version, but they were saying do they have like psychic powers or something? Because they always seem to come back when you've finally gotten yourself together. And uh, and I was thinking, yeah, I bet you there is some truth to that. <laughs> that they know. They know that you're not that into them anymore. And they try to hook you back in. The higher message is the seven. I Now see, this is tricky for me because I always see it looks like eight to me. It looks like there's three bars there. Um, this deck sometimes... It, is hard for me to read certain um, of the numbers because of the way that they're written. Um, but the, the Seven of Cups is a card about um, 
you know, choices and confusion. I, I just happened to notice, you know, that the sun is at the bottom and the moon is at top. And really, this is a card that I think is connected to Neptune. And in, in the tarot, Neptune is connected to Pisces. I mean, Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, but it's connected... Pisces is connected to the moon in the, the tarot, uh, while you are ruled by the moon, and uh, the sun is at the bottom. So the, you know, I guess what they're trying to, to indicate is that the the moon, the illusion, is more the power, the power element here. And as a result, this can mean that you feel, this is a spiritual message, so it's asking you, are you lying to yourself? Even though you have gained clarity on something, you may lapse back into that wishful thinking because you want a certain outcome. And you have to really guard against that. And an example would be somebody who may, let's say, you know, this is kind of a, a common example that would relate to situations like like uh, you know what makes people break up is like addiction so if somebody um, has an addiction and you realize that you don't want to deal with this forever and you break up with that person and then they say they've stopped and you have to decide do I believe them you want everything in your in your heart to believe uh, in that person because you love them but you there's something about it maybe it's that ace of swords you just kind of have this laser like laser sharp uh, intellect that is telling you perhaps that it's not that easy that there is something else going on here so being able to, I mean, or, or that there could be, like that that person might really feel like they have quit, but they, you know, maybe they've relapsed before, and you just don't have that ability uh, to just trust them. Um, and that's just one possible example. It's just this idea of, like, to me, with the Seven of Cups in a relationship, it's not knowing whether or not this is how it should be. Oh, and another example is if somebody has cheated on you and maybe um, you were thinking of getting married and they, you know, they cheated on you, but they, you found out about it, the Ace of Swords could be finding out about it, and you're not sure if you want to go through with it because you just feel like um, it's hard to trust them now that Seven of Cups would be saying yes. I mean, that they may, um, you know, Seven of Cups can be about addiction too, so it might even suggest that, you know, somebody's infidelity is just the tip of the iceberg, that there's other things going on as well. And that, yeah, I mean, believing somebody that has shown themselves to do things that you are against is, is wishful thinking. What crosses you is the Two of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles can be a card of like having a lot going on in your life. And, um, you know, I also can see this reading for somebody who gets asked back to a certain company that maybe you got laid off from or something along those lines. And um, you may be questioning whether or not to go back to it. Two of Pentacles can be you have a lot on your plate and maybe you are not thinking as clearly because you're kind of in this frenzied state. Um, it's interesting that we have the twos, the two twos here. Do we have any other twos? I don't see it. Um, but the the bottom line is that um, if this is like a work situation, you may have somewhere else that you're working as well, and you're not sure if you can handle both, if you can juggle both of them. Um, if this is a love situation, there may be a third party 
that is involved or um, they are yeah I guess you could say uh, that would be a third party if they are involved with somebody else and so sometimes what people do is that they always have somebody waiting in the wings because they you know in case somebody rejects them they can always go to somebody else well that's that's to me a little bit too dependent on relationships and fickle in a lot of ways as well but that's just my opinion isn't it what's coming in this is a wonderful card the sun card this is an example of that texture of that and also the colors I like the colors but um, this is a card of a lot of positive things so the Sun rules the sign of Leo um, and so I mean unless this is an actual Leo person but um, basically the Sun is about love it's about creativity it's about success happiness you know like joy and things like that so coming into your life with that sense now um, one thing as we get into the sign of Pisces we're talking about water energy and that can be quite um, that can be uh, quite good for you because you are a cancer and and uh, you and Pisces are both water signs so there's a trine action happening whenever we have the Sun trining our Sun that's always nice and that feels really good so um, perhaps it's talking about this period of time that you're going to feel more positive um, and I did pick a few outcome cards um, the first one that I picked was the Sun of Swords which is about kind of to me that you're you know kind of I don't want to say guarded but more um, you're not just kind of walking into something blindly so if you're deciding whether or not to get back together with somebody I think you're going to do a little detective work and see if what they're saying matches what they what they're um, what they're really doing and and see if it, it's consistent um, but I think that it it's to your benefit because you may have been in a situation where you got duped by the same person and you don't want to be the same fool twice so I did pick I wanted to pick one more card but two came out one of them is the daughter of wands which is the page of wands actually you got two wonderful cards this reading is actually quite good um, I have to say the daughter of wands is the page of wands so this is like you know good news start spreading the news is what I always write for my titles when I get that card but um, feeling like you're starting something that is very um, full of joy so you get the Sun card and the page of wands so there's that sense of you know feeling alive feeling like a big kid at heart and then I got the wheel of fortune so this is also uh, a, this is a card that's associated with Jupiter Jupiter is in the opposite sign um, of yours Jupiter is in Capricorn and it's in your seventh house of committed partnership so meeting somebody that could be a committed partner and this person um, it, perhaps it's a Leo but it's it's feeling that feeling of passion with this person it's not like if I get a lot of Pentacles what I think of is that the person is quite um, a, you know like a solid type of a person but it's not necessarily someone that you're just like so excited about um, interesting that we have those cups up there so I don't know if you were dealing with an actual Pisces or not um, 
or a Scorpio, I guess, if not a Cancer. But uh, I love the sun. I love the sun. If you, if you decide to form a partnership with somebody, you may have really good, you know, luck. And uh, yeah, because, you know, actually, um, the seventh house can be business partnerships, too. So with Jupiter there, that is actually indicated. So awesome. Okay, that's what I have for you, Cancer. I hope that it resonated. If you'd like a personal reading, the link is in the description box below. Take care. Bye.